Representative Shea. New video, Planned Parenthood video, baby parts buyer jokes about shipping severed heads. And the Weekly Standard has the transcript of that. We focused on Infowars.com on another part of the quote, joking about needing 50 livers a week and saying sometimes it's just blood clots. What are they climbing out of the dishes on their own? I mean, it's a long video because they're not putting these out edited. Uh, some of these videos are five, six hours long. And I mean, you sit there and you watch them always drinking wine, giggling, snickering, uh, making fun of the dead babies. Uh, truly disgusting. Meanwhile, Lindsey Graham says Trump's immigration plan is stupid and illegal. You'd expect that from a traitor like Lindsey Graham. Uh, Rutgers quietly re uh, removes no such thing as free speech from their student manual. I mean, talk about re-education camp. Talk about tyranny. Uh, give up already. Almost half of Americans say Hillary should halt presidential campaign. New video. Again, Planned Parenthood baby parts buyer asked for another 50 livers per week. U.S. Uh, protects Afghan opium fields from Taliban attack. Trump says Chinese economic crisis could lead to depression. No kidding. It's time to kick prepping into overdrive because the stock market crash is just the beginning. And Chinese market crash again in biggest collapse in 20 years. But the Federal Reserve props up the stock market here. And that's why it's so dangerous because it's artificial. And the Federal Reserve is using basically U.S. tax money that we got to pay for later to pump up stocks that then only helps the people that own the stocks. And it, and it basically picks winners is why it's such a problem. Uh, but I wanted for TV viewers, I'll describe it for radio listeners, to play a few clips, just the video, from that Red Dawn piece that we uh, released last week. Because when you look at them in the re-education camp, and we play clips of Hillary and clips of other people on MSNBC saying your kids don't belong to you, you have to understand, we have an army manual that came out two years ago that we can put on screen right now at army.mil, where in the article, it openly states, and again, it links to the document. I pulled it up during the break with Nico, so it's, it's right there on that computer, where it says re-education camp for the American people. And it talks about our social security numbers, how to process us. This is the ultimate smoking gun article. Yes, the re-education camp manual does apply domestically to U.S. citizens. It says it more than 20 times in the manual. And you can link to it for yourself and how the PSYOP teams are going to brainwash the public, control the local political leaders and do all this. And this is what Jade Helm is about in their own admissions is mastering the human domain. Then we play some of the background video for TV viewers of the re-education camp. And then in Red Dawn, it, it, it cuts uh, to some of the young high school students freaking out as they actually see war come to their shores and they can't believe it. But at least they're upset by it and resist it. That's how we are, folks. I get freaked out every time I see the video, I see the documents, I see the training, I hear the announcements with classical tyranny being brought forward and the government preparing for war with us. It is so ridiculous. Joe Biggs, final comments. Well, I mean, you see it sublimely being dropped in video games as well. I play a lot of games from time to time, combat games, and all you see in the background are FEMA camp signs. You see these camps where there's people behind the uh, barbed wire, uh, like a Call of Duty Advanced Warfighter. You see the exact same stuff like you saw in Red Dawn, where there's these FEMA trailers everywhere, and the whole place is just ransacked, and people are in camps, and you're sitting there fighting with this uh, tyrannical government. I mean, it's crazy, and they're dropping it little by little in all these different games to kind of slowly get into the people's mind is something to accept and see some people exactly would say oh good patriots are inside the video game makers and they're trying to warn us well some of them are but the elite are allowing that to come out because they actually want to start a physical civil war they want people to get the idea to go out and be part of this joe yeah, yeah exactly i mean the way that they're hinting at it non-stop and the fact that you can see the dumbing down of people like the people that just don't even know their rights it's mind-blowing because when it gets to a point where they actually do want to implement something like that, 
it'll be so easy for them to because there's just a lot of people out there that don't even know what it is that they can and can't do. Do you think the sheriff has been put up to trying to bait? You've said yes, but I mean, do you think specifically the Southern Poverty Law Center has gone in there and done this? They've done it before. I mean, with his track record, I, I don't see why not. I mean, it looks like it could be one of those things where he just wants to, to get people riled up and then they can use it to usher in something. I mean, the way that the SPLC is coming in there, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't trust the guy one bit at all. When do you think that he can be voted out of office? When is the... That personally, I don't know, but I, like you said, they have a lot of support to get him out of office. And I've met a lot of people in Spokane, and most people I've met out there are very passionate about getting that man out of office and getting someone new in there. Well, that's the answer to the situation. Like I said, that MRAP I saw was the biggest MRAP I had ever seen. When Josh and I stood there beside that, and we were actually invited in there to look at that, that thing is ginormous. Yeah, we have the footage. I you don't even just... know what you would need that for here. That is so over the top. What was the name of that video last year? We can pull it up whenever you went and showed the MRAP. InfoWars Tours MRAP or what was it? Yeah, uh, Spokane MRAP or Spokane Tank, something like that. Uh, Josh is back there right now. But yeah, I mean, that that when I saw it, I was in complete and total awe. Much larger than anything I had ever seen in combat that the U.S. Army used. It was so bulky and giant. Yeah, that's going to scare people. When you pull up and say you're here to help me in that vehicle, sorry, but I'm not going to feel like I'm safe at all whatsoever. Well, they're the same armored vehicles they have in Hunger Games. They actually use those vehicles in the Hunger Games for a dystopic world. It is a dystopic world we're in right now. I mean, and then we sit here and we talk about it and they laugh. Hey, a, a quick uh, InfoWarsLife.com story. You flew up with a buddy on a private um, single-engine plane, I guess, uh, up to Georgia to be part of another head down event. You said you were flying back and stopped for some gas at a small airport and ran into somebody that didn't even listen to the show, but had the products. Tell folks that story. Yeah, so I was flying into, uh, it's called the Silver Comet Airport in Paulding County, Georgia. And I landed and there's this guy sitting out there like a red carpet. I guess to do that for every little plane that pulls up. And he rolls it out. I was like, oh, this is so neat. You it's know, a nice gimmick, yeah. Yeah. So I get out and this guy goes, oh my God. He says, uh, uh, InfoWars, right? He's like, I've seen you on the, the store site. And I said, oh, yeah? And he goes, yeah, yeah, come inside, come inside, come inside really quick. So he runs me inside, and he's all excited. He has his whole family line up in this little tiny airport, and they lay out the, the super male vitality, the you know super female, the, the X2, the, the silver, the colloidal silver, everything. And I said, wow, I was like, you're a listener of the show? He goes, I didn't even know you guys had a show. He says, the local fire department and police department over here, they always bring me over these samples and then they gave me a link to the store, so I just go in there all the time. But see how it's police and firefighters yeah. that are awake. That's why Soros wants to get a war going with them, because we can show bad examples of cops all day. And sure, it goes viral and it's entertaining to just blame them. But they're more awake on average than the general public. They're allies of the country on average. We don't want to have a civil war with them. Right there. It's the police and the fire department giving it to them and turning folks onto the show. I've got a lot of friends who are in bands like the Damn Quells. These guys tour all over the country, and they all they do is you'll see them on stage taking the Super Mel Vitality. They'll, they'll flip their guitar up and they'll have the Infowars.com sticker on there. What a great listener. And, and they go out and they, they promote it and they, they give it to people and talk about it, and everyone loves it. I've got nothing but great feedback. Even when I walk to the airport, people will be like, Super Mel Vitality, and they'll yell at me. And put their fists up in the air. I'm like, all right, man, right on. Well, the product really does work good yeah. and um, doesn't have the bad side effects. Because I took some Yohimbi in college working out with some really big guys to see what it would do. And I got bigger. I was on it about a month. This root, I guess it has testosterone. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Wavos got a little smaller and I got really grumpy and I had headaches and like hot flashes. <laughs> None of that happens on Super Male Vitality. No. You've been taking it. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I remember the first day I took it. I mean, it, it, the reaction is different for everyone, but I, I honestly remember feeling like this boost of energy immediately within about 30 to 45 minutes. I was kind of like, huh. And I was like, I think yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, it does make me become a jerk if I take too much. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I used to take half the dose. Now I've built up to taking a full dose, uh, but it's the real deal and it funds the operation. I, I take that and I uh, also have the colloidal silver. I take that a good bit. Uh, I went to Hawaii on vacation not too long ago, and everyone out there had colloidal silver and super male vitality. I kid you not. Whenever I went somewhere, someone stopped me. They would go home and be like, hey, I just need to go down to my house real quick. They come back and they pull it out of their purse or their, their pocket just to show me that they were supporting the show and that they had been buying those products. So I thought that was really interesting. It's incredible. And if folks continue to do that, we're going to be able to really expand the operation, get yeah, more definitely. reporters. 
uh, get more riders. I mean, right now we've just spent a ton of money with the new studio, the satellite systems, all of that. Uh, so know this, folks, you're really helping us fight the globalist, and we really appreciate your support. But plus, you're getting amazing products. Uh, for women, it, it, it has, look, I didn't, I didn't go out and get this product to be an aphrodisiac or to be, uh, you know, a libido deal. Um, Sometimes but I will tell you this. Way. Well, I just wanted to see because the doctor uh, I went to said, hey, you, do you want a you know, thing for Cialis or Viagra? And I said, yeah, since I was already using super male, they, they, they're not as good. <laughs> I'm not that I even need it. You know, 75% of the use of that's recreational. And I don't mean to get details, but we're adults here, <laughs> folks. You know, we're being honest about this. <laughs> super male is not something that we... Are, are, are pitching in that direction, but that's the first thing I noticed the day after I took it. Oh, yeah. I will uh, have to concur on that one. Now, Joe, you're not married. You're not allowed to be involved in this. <laughs> Anyways, no, no, but what about stamina working out? I noticed you've lost some weight. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing a lot of, trying to do more cardio, but it's hard. Like I said, I've been trying to get surgery on my knee and my foot for some The VA won't again. do it? Eh, it takes forever. You go in, you see a doctor, and then there's a new doctor there the next week, and then there's a new doctor the next time you go in, and you just have to re-explain your situation. This is a long, drawn-out process. Well, we appreciate all the folks out there. God bless you. We'll be back with that clip of the comedian basically exposing Bilderberg uh, on the Conan O'Brien broadcast. That's a big deal because these shows are so censored. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Infowars.com. What I was getting in earlier, most of you probably got, but I didn't boil it down that simply. I get convoluted. Because I'm really just stream of consciousness on air. The opposite of teleprompter or talking points. It's fantastical that the government's been taken over by foreign interest, that the Chinese are the second largest owners of our debt, the Chinese communist, that the Panama Canal was handed over, that we've been maneuvered into the end of our sovereignty, just like the United Kingdom. And that now they've got the police and military training to take on gun owners and veterans as the number one enemy. And I know I harp on that because harping on it will expose it before they trigger the events that give them the pretext to take over. I mean, these folks want to arrest a woman with no criminal record holding up a pro-life sign, part of a nationwide protest. That's called dirtbag behavior. I wouldn't arrest a person with a hammer and sickle, even though I hate it. Because I've got to defend their right or we'll lose it all. I mean, how do you get sheriff deputies to act like this? You, they, they're led by a scumbag. A lying scumbag. And I'm just going to talk like that because I realize there's no way to be a gentleman with somebody like this. I have people on here for, quote, debates. I try to be gentlemanly. And then it's implied that, you know... I lost the debate because I wasn't aggressive or mean and let somebody talk. That's what people want is they just want to all be nasty, I guess. Because I wish this sheriff would be a patriot, but he's not. He's trampling people's rights. They're preparing to take the guns of Social Security recipients. Days after we reported on it, it was mainstream news. Do you understand? They, with a straight face, get on TV and in the newspapers, and talk about, yeah, we're looking at using the same formula the VA has that's secret to take the guns of uh, Social Security recipients. One thing the FBI says, if you take a money transfer, that means you're incompetent. And they just talk about it with a straight face. People go, oh, okay. And yeah, we sell living babies. You know, we, we, we dissect them, and we sell their organs. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. We got dead kids in the basement, you know, it's. And flying saucers landed in Times Square. I mean, it's all over the top. And, and people need to just break out of the trance and go, man, this is weird. This is crazy that MRAPs are being delivered and they're training at the ROTCs all over the country to fight the militias. And that's just going to be people that run to the hills that don't want to be drug off to a FEMA camp. By the way, I feel sorry for the military. They're going to try to march a bunch of 18 and 19 and 20-year-old young men off to fight 30, 40, 50, 60-year-old, 70-year-old veterans who don't, who aren't scared to die. I mean, I really feel sorry for the people that, I mean, the best of the best in this country are going to fight back. And I just really feel sorry for anybody maneuvered into a civil war with the liberty movement in this country. It's the most vicious fighting force the world's ever seen. 
It'll make the Iraqis look like little angel cakes. It'll make the Russians look tame. Basically, the New World Order starting a fight with the Patriots is like Hitler starting a fight with the Russians, but worse. I mean, <laughs> the gloves actually come off. You people are going to be in serious trouble very quickly. Mark Cornkey has the best allegory for it. He's absolutely right. It's like up north, they have moose hunting licenses, but there's so few moose, you've got to go be part of a lottery, and maybe one out of ten people that enter the lottery on average it's kind of like a mountain lion lottery or whatever in Texas. Maybe one out of ten will actually get the ticket to get the license to hunt the moose. And if there is a civil war, being a New World Order operative, being a minion, being an enforcer, is going to be like being a moose in moose hunting season. If the patriots come after you. I'm just telling you, your bosses are trying to get you into something. That, <laughs> it's just... Whew, feel sorry for you. That's all I can say. And I, I don't want a civil war. I'm not telling you this to sound big and sound strong. The liberty movement is strong, and you know it. We're the enemy of the world government. We got the whole world government breathing down our neck because we're one of the last countries that had not been disarmed yet. Let's go to this video of the comedian jabbing Hillary on Conan O'Brien, Bill Burr, who the, who the crew's a big fan of, obviously telling it like it is. Here's the clip. Donald Trump, do you think a businessman like Trump has a chance to be president? Do you think he has any shot at all? Do you think this is real? Um, no, just because no one would work with him. Like, Republicans <laughs> and Democrats would be babies, and they would pout because they're, like, bought and owned. And it's like, how come this guy's free right. and gets to say whatever he wants? I mean, I don't know. I've enjoyed the hell out of him, just all the stuff the guy's been saying. I just, I hope more politicians are just, at least just say what they're thinking. Right. I love when they were going like, yeah, you, you, you said all this sexist stuff about women. You said this about we're women. We're going to come you back and play the whole clip. Women. You said this and he goes. Because that's the long version. I was going to play just a short clip about Hillary. But we're going to come back with the whole thing. See, Trump gives people the courage to speak their mind. As more of us we're do it, march. it's game over. The empire the on the run. <laughs> we're coming for you. Alex you're Jones gone. and the Either GCN way, Radio Network. destroyed you. People out there want to know how to be successful in media. You need to have passion. You need to have history. You need to have a will to tell it like it is, even if you get demonized and attacked for it. And whether you're always right or always wrong, whatever, people want to hear from folks that are authentic. And it's the authentic people historically that are right nine times out of ten. Because we're trying to be honest. We're not trying to spin things. I feel sorry for the liars, the teleprompter readers, the prostitutes that... Gerald Salente calls him because their job is rough. Uh, here's that clip I was mentioning. Comedian jabs Hillary Clinton for attending Bilderberg on national TV. And in context, he was serious attacking both political parties as basically being a mafia. Comedian and actor Bill Burr called out presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. Here is that clip. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think it matters who's president. I'm one of those people. I don't what? think it does. You don't I don't think, think it matters. It doesn't. Doesn't. Doesn't matter at all. Dude, Hillary Clinton goes to those Bilderberg meetings. That's like the Illuminati stuff, right? She probably hooked up with some guy wearing like a goat's head, and then she goes out on TV, and she's talking to people who drive snow plows. Like, she can relate to them. Going to Gerald Salente, who's got his new op-ed editorial in the USA Today today, World Sinks Deep into Recession, Opposing View. We've also got a clip of him a while back basically predicting now what's unfolding. Uh, I, I predict that you're going to see the stock market in the next few weeks go right back down to new lows. They've just gone in and used the president's open market committee, the plunge protection team, to, to pump it back up. We're going to get uh, Joel Salente's take on that here in just a moment. Please don't forget, we have the highest quality water filtration systems, the lowest prices like the Pro Pure G2 system that cuts out the glyphosates, the fluoride, you name it. We have the side-by-side -side comparisons from top third-party labs in the country about how we annihilate the competition. If the competition was anywhere near it, I would just carry all their stuff too because I'm all about carrying the biggest selection. We carry a Pro Pure life straw for emergency situations, and a couple other systems that are even more affordable but just massively reduce everything. They don't completely cut out a bunch of stuff. But when you're cutting out 99% of something, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, but we've got what the stuff I use in my house, the stuff I use when I'm on vacation, when I'm traveling. I mean, th th we set out to really do two years of research. We need to sell water filters. You notice I just stopped selling water filters because I, I got fed up. 
I mean, I will not sell something unless I've really researched it and believe in it. 10% off promo code WATER continually, InfoWarsStore.com, a subsection of InfoWarsStore.com. You see the taste test videos, the, the scientific studies, uh, all of it that is right there on the site. So... It is very important to shop with the good guys, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. InfoWarsStore.com is the books, the videos, the t-shirts, the ball caps, the shortwave radios, the cook stoves, the non-GMO seeds, and hundreds of other items, the dash cams, the, 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 the not made in America apparel. But InfoWarsLife.com has the high quality nutraceuticals made in 1776.com has all the, the apparel made in America if you should so choose to purchase in that way. So this is how we fund the operation. I salute you and I thank you, uh, Prostigard uh, and so many other great products at InfoWarsLife.com. And we will stop selling the colloidal silver at the buy two, get two free when we run out to a certain level. And then I'm going to keep what we've got left because it's going to be until middle of October till we get more colloidal silver. Uh, if I sell out, I'm going to keep some back at the regular sales rate uh, so that we never sell out. Now, that's what I'm going to start doing is not discounting things if I'm, I'm unable to uh, because that frustrates people not being able to get it. So take advantage of that now, InfoWarsLife.com. And again, uh, Gerald would already be on with us. His Skype dropped a while back. We're trying to reconnect with him. So that's why I'm here basically babbling around uh, and motor mouthing. Uh, I'm happy to get Gerald on via phone if, if we're having issues. So we can just abort Skype and just get him on phone. Okay, uh, continuing here with some of the news that we need to get into. Hillary Clinton is in big trouble. The Democrats are openly getting ready to run Joe Biden. Uh, Obama gives Biden his blessing to mull White House run. Uh, this story is from CBS Washington. And the word is Obama is basically letting the Justice Department go after Hillary enough to not actually prosecute her, but to wound her so that the Obama dynasty can go on with its puppets like Biden instead of Obama being a puppet of the Clintons. So he's basically Clintoning the Clintons with what they did to him so that his crew of rats uh, can go into the future staying in power. Because it is the Clintons that basically, to a great degree, controlled Obama. They wanted Hillary, but he was more popular, so they allowed him to get in. Uh, and now that double crossing uh, is going on. Speaking of China, Asia's richest man loses $3.6 billion on China's Black Monday as world's billionaires uh, see their fortunes tumble. Wang Jan Lin saw U.S. $2 billion wiped from his stake in Dalen Wanda Commercial Properties. Again, Asia's richest person loses $3.6 billion alone yesterday. Their markets were, again, down massively today. Chinese rate cut, not enough to dispel concerns. U.S. stocks jump at the open and continue on. We'll put up CNBC for folks and give them uh, some of the current numbers there. Let's continue here with some of the other news about what's been happening uh, with the uh, economy. Chinese markets crash again in biggest collapse in 20 years. The key Shanghai Composite Index sank another 7.63 uh, today, extending its worst route. So again, what happened with our stock market? Well, they admit it now. They went in with the plunge protection team and pumped it up. We do have Gerald Salente now, and I want to play a clip from Gerald Salente, and we'll give you the date in a moment, uh, predicting what's now happening to the Dow, and he'll give us his further projections now that we've gotten a lot closer uh, to the bubble completely imploding. And, of course, Mr. Dent was also on with us uh, two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, and predicted that this would start within two weeks and pretty much nailed it directly. Uh, here is the Gerald Salente clip. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti, Wednesday, April 23rd, 2014, and here are some of today's 
Trends in the news. The markets, well, everything is kind of flat today. Gold is flat. The markets are flat. Earl is flat. And coming down a little bit. But the prices of the pump are going up. It's springtime. People drive more. Got to get them prices up. Hey. And here's the fact. U.S. middle class is no longer world's richest. No kidding. Wow. Well, Gerald, better late than uh, never. I heard your uh, power went off, but we're glad you're here via telephone. Uh, Gerald Salente, uh, is this the beginning of the implosion of the bubble? Yes. Actually, on August 6th, there's another tape. It's on YouTube as well. I came out and said that the um, markets were going to crash before the end of the year. And sooner rather than later, it was a Trends in the News broadcast. What people are missing, Alex, is you pick up the headlines and they're all blaming China, China's economic woes. Even Trump came out blaming China. It's not China. It's, it's the global slowdown. China is the, is the canary in the global equity mine. And the, I've said this over and over again. If Americans and Europeans don't buy things, the Chinese don't make them. If the Chinese don't make them, all those natural resource-rich countries, Australia, Venezuela, Russia, Chile, Bolivia, they're not, and on and on, Canada, they're not exporting their raw materials. It's a global slowdown. When I was on your show two weeks ago, the Bloomberg Commodity Index was down to 13-year lows. It is now down to 16-year lows. With that, you're seeing the currencies of all of these natural resource-rich countries plummeting one after another. So what you have is you have, for example, the ruble. It's down to its 2015 lows against the dollar. It was trading at something like, you know, 36 rubles to a dollar. Now it's 70 something. It's one after another. And by the way, what happened is we have a whole blackout in the city of Kingston. That's why we went off the air so quick. And our phone lines are down as well. So we're doing this over cell phone. So what we're looking at, uh, uh, Alex, is a complete commodities crash, a complete currency crash. It has nothing to do with China, but it's easy to pick out an enemy, so let's make it China. And as you pointed out, Chinese markets are continuing to crash. This is after unprecedented schemes to prop up their failing Shanghai index, prohibiting short selling. You'll go to jail or we'll shoot you, maybe if we don't take you to jail. You cannot sell your grade A stocks for six months. We're dumping in over $200 billion to prop the markets up, and it's still not working. Their real estate bubble has collapsed. This is the world's second largest economy. Look at the Nikkei index. Look at the yen. And it's not a question of the, the Chinese devaluing their yuan lower so they could export more. The yen is completely devalued. And you're looking at Japanese exports down. The people have no money. That's why they're not buying things. That's why China's not making them. And that's why there's a global equity market crash. And what they're not talking about, and this is very important, when the quantitative easing scheme happened, they funneled the world with cheap dough. All these emerging markets borrow this money for n next to nothing. Now these emerging markets, economies are collapsing because the commodity prices collapsing, their currencies are collapsing, and guess what? This is barely reported. Over $9 trillion of bond buying between the, of companies and countries in these emerging markets has come from the United States, not from the government, not from the banks, but from mutual funds from Templeton, from BlackRock, from PIMCO. So now you have all these declining economies. You have their, their currencies 
devalued and their debt is owed in dollars. So now they can't even pay it back and they can't raise interest rates to prop up their currencies because their economies are collapsing. So if you make interest rates higher, things only get worse. And now the Federal Reserve is signaling that they may lower rates more. How can they lower rates more when it's already at zero for the big private banks? Of course, not zero for the people. A, B, Gerald, what do you expect to see in the next few weeks? They were able to pump up the U.S. stock market today. Uh, don't you expect that to start going down just like the Chinese one did? Well, of course, at some point. But again, you know, this is, you know, people better stop calling this capitalism. It's, it's fascism. It's the merger of state and corporate powers. If you or I don't do good business, you don't see them bailing us out or playing games. They do this to protect their buddies. So it's they might do like Zimbabwe and just say the stock market's at $5 billion or something. I mean, they could just start putting any number they want on it. Exactly. So what will they do? You mentioned the plunge protection team. They'll do anything they can to prop it up. Here is what we're seeing. And this is what we believe is going to happen. You know I have the track record for this. Make sure you have your money in your hands. You talked about Zimbabwe currency devaluations. Because if you don't have your money, you don't own it. You saw what happened to me with MF Global. You saw what happened to me. I wrote about it when I tried to make large withdrawals out of banks, HSBC and Key Bank. Those are the names I wrote about it. They refused to give me my money. I had to go through a lot of, a lot of. Look anger. at Greece. Look at other countries. Look at capital controls now coming in in Spain. They're gearing up for it. And look at Cyprus and look on and on. So if you don't have your money in your pocket, you don't own it. Number two, watch for violent crime. You can even see it. It's increasing already. You know my line. When people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And with that, you're going to see more racial tension because there's going to be finger pointing. The other one to look at, and you can see it going on around the world. They call it migration in Europe. It's immigration in the United States. I mentioned what's going on in these countries with devalued currencies and crashing commodity prices. Whether it's Ghana or whether it's Chile, whether it's Colombia or whether it's Venezuela, whether it's Angola or Nigeria. All of these countries are barely making it when things were going well. You're going to see floods of people leaving their countries trying to find a place to make a buck. And on top of that, the wonderful wars brought to us by Obama, Bush, Clinton, and you look at the pictures of the people running into Macedonia and breaking over the borders. Read the words where they're from. They're from Afghanistan. They're from Yemen. They're from Iraq, and they're from Libya, and that's what's going on, and Syria, because of the United States wars. And meanwhile, the government's getting armored vehicles, preparing to use them on the Tea Party, and veterans, and they're openly announcing that cash should be illegal, and they should take our money out of our accounts, and you shouldn't be able to leave the country with money. You can see them getting ready for this while they tell us not to get ready, and that we're conspiracy theorists. Uh, if we care, and then Obama is advertising immigrants who are unskilled to come here and have their anchor babies. Uh, what do you think the master plan is there, A, and then B, much more important? Gerald, you've been very accurate so far. What do you see next? Because I know you couldn't tell how the breaks would be exactly. But now that we're closer to it, how do you expect this meltdown to unroll? Because the reason I started saying a year ago, I now believe it's imminent, is because I talked to a lot of high-powered people like you do, it was also in the news, that there's a major exodus to armored fortresses, armored redoubts, uh, offshore bases, uh, New Zealand, bunkers in the Ozarks, bunkers in the middle of the Canadian wilderness. I mean, the elite are pulling out a dodge. Go ahead. Well, you got it. And that's what I'm saying. As we see more violence, as we see more tensions, they're going to do everything they can to break down the people. And then what they're going to do, just like they're blaming China on this, they're going to find a scapegoat. And it may be a false flag or real. But you're going to see one. And it's going to happen. So what we're saying is that's how they're going to use this. And the fact of the matter is, here is the proof 
that no one knew what was coming. This is Friday from CNBC. The host, after the markets were closed, and you know they were down significantly on Friday, she said, quote, does the speed of this correction tell us anything? Not just the fact that it happened, but that it happened so swiftly. Art Cashin answers, quote, I think it showed that most people were not prepared for anything like it. End quote. There you got it. These are the top people on Wall Street. They didn't see it coming. As you mentioned, whether it was Dent, whether it's me, whether it's um, others you have on your show, there's only a few of us that have called it the way it is. They didn't see it coming. It's not about China. It's about a global slow down absolutely i mean you were on last week talking about this and saying it's imminent and you look around the world everything's going in the toilet then they say we're pessimist porn dealers and they say that about you in new york times they said about me and time magazine and and we're trying to stop the bubbles from expanding and blowing up we're trying to say what are you doing we're trying to say stop giving trillions to yourselves if you're going to devalue currencies at least give it to the people so at least there's an economy it has bad side effects but it's better than what you're doing and and then they just ignore us because the truth is they know what they're doing gerald they're consolidating power they want us poor to control us they're going to use the global meltdown as a new power grab my friend and a martial plan for the world look for that term they always use it They've been proposing it at Davos, $100 trillion per decade in new taxes run by the International Bank of Settlements, IMF World Bank, based on SDRs, based on a basket of currencies and metals. Uh, they're already pushing it. This is their plan to say the world's too big to fail. Give us control during the meltdown. And just like the power grab in 2008, we'll be here in seven, eight years, and it'll be even worse. Yeah, that, that may well happen, but there's something bigger looming, and that's war. Yes. When all else fails, they take you to war, and that's all. You're going to start hearing more and more. And more is that talk. why the elites are running to the South Pacific? You got it. This thing is out of control. As I mentioned, you go and read any of the comments from the people flooding into Macedonia, and they'll give you the countries, as I mentioned, Afghanistan, Libya, Iraq. But no one is saying, how come they're leaving these countries? Couldn't be because of the United States, could it? Bombing these places to hell and the people fleeing for their lives. No, they don't mention that. Oh, here's a big one. You know that Saudi Arabia is bombing Yemen, the poorest nation in the Middle East. They've slaughtered over 5,000 people already. It's not making the news. Let's put this together. You see where oil prices are. The Saudi budget to break even, oil has to be selling at $100 a barrel. We're talking now Brent crude down around 42 Now they started a war. Remember that Saudi Arabia is about the third largest buyer of war equipment, bombs and planes and, and missiles each year. Now they're using that. So what we're saying is, you're going to start seeing a great destabilization among the populations of these dictatorships like the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Saudi Arabia. And I love it. They call them uh, they call royal families. Yeah, like a, like a princess kissed the frog and the frog became a king. How about dictatorships set up by the English after World War I? So now we're going to see massive destabilization in these countries. That's why I'm saying to you that the biggest trend on the horizon to be aware of is an explosion in the Middle East that will be heard around the world as oil prices keep collapsing, currencies keep collapsing, the economies collapse, and they take the people to war, whether it's false flag or real. And then you add the cherry on top. Clearly, they're activating the propaganda that liberty groups are going to start blowing up buildings with no evidence. Clearly, it's going to be a false flag. The elite are going to try to start a civil war domestically with gun owners. They, I mean, I mean if they couldn't take over Baghdad, they're going to start a fight with their own military, basically. These people are insane, Gerald. Have they reached the bravada, chutzpah, 
uh, arrogance, uh, hubris, point of no return. Yes. Again, you know, it's it, it, people. People just sit back. It's not only now. How could they let a Hitler destroy their country? You know, these are the Germans in the 1930s at the height of Western civilization. Amazing people. Yeah, culturally, philosophically, uh, uh, scientifically. Bach, Beethoven, Wagner, Goethe. Think of the great names from Fritz Lang to Marlene Dietrich. All the big scientific Einstein. discoveries, everything dominating the world with peaceful trade, and then they let him take over. Stay there. We're back in 60 seconds with Gerald Salente. Uh, man, I tell you, this is a time to be awake and involved. Final segment. I want to say great job to the crew, all of our affiliates, listeners. Just, it's very humbling to be here. We are not telling you all this to scare you, and I know most of you know that, but mainstream media keeps acting like that Gerald Salente, myself, and others are, are, are f porn dealers. Fear porn dealers is the term. And you know what? We have integrity. I mean, I tell you what I really believe. These MRAPs are for domestic groups. Watch, and then it comes out. Because I already had all the manuals saying their main enemy is the gun owner. So, of course, the MRAPs are for us. And then, of course, it comes out. Uh, I mean, you know, sometimes I make an extrapolation. I, I reach some because it's like stepping off in the dark. I know there's a step there. But most of the time, what I'm talking about is just admitted already. We have a giant, fraudulent, counterfeit derivative bubble of debt that isn't ours. We see what these globalists do to other countries. They want to basically enslave us now. They're starting wars with everybody. Gerald, we only got four minutes left. You got to come back soon. Sorry you got the power outage and got 10 minutes cut off. But what do you make of Kissinger coming out and saying the war against Russia has failed and criticizing Obama? What do you make of, I mean, can sanity prevail and these Wall Street elites stop playing general and not kill everybody? No. Uh, they, they're out of their minds. They're psychopaths and sociopaths. I mean, we mentioned Hitler. How about Mussolini? You can keep going up and down the list. How about George W. Bush setting us to war on based on lies? You know, it's one after another. And you're right about this gloom and doomer. I want to read this to you real quickly. This is from Thursday's CNBC. This is what this guy Bob Pisani says after the market closes. You know, I'll tell you what's frustrating to everybody. What exactly has changed in the last 48 hours in the world to see this kind of little mini collapse? Let's call it a collapse in the marketplace. I'm baffled by it. I get up this morning at 5.30, China's way down. I say, ooh, European open is lousy. The future's lousy. I send out a note. Anybody know what's going on? Can you tell me a specific reason? Nobody gives me a reason. Just this vague sense. You ready? Of gloom and doom. Yeah, this and is... Uh... It's not that it's overvalued. It's not that there's a major global slowdown. It's not that all these wars have drained us. It's not the derivatives. All these pundits act like they don't know what's going on, Gerald. They do, though. And again, they blame gloom and doom, like you were saying. They call us doom doomsayers. How about, how about we see things differently than you do, and we have the facts to back it up while you're just spewing out more about Selling. I'll tell you what, Alex. This is a buying opportunity. How many times have you heard that over the last week? Well, I think five, ten years down the road, after it actually corrects to what the real earnings are, the PE ratios, maybe. I mean, this stuff is way overvalued. This stuff is ridiculous. And when there's a world slowdown, obviously, then I would expect stocks to go down unless we live in fairyland with the private banks running policy. Uh, basically just, just, just putting out free money. But still, it only dilutes the quality. Again, that's why I'm bullish on gold. All of this, and again, you know well, we have no advertisers. Nobody pays me to say this. You, they're, they're devaluing all the currencies. There's a currency crash going on around the world in front of everybody's eyes, sure. from Malaysia to Russia. <laughs> Gerald, I know you've got a really busy day coming up, and if you need to leave, that's fine. I would do it 12 minutes more so you could kind of have the floor when we come back. I won't be hurt if you got to go, though. You want to do 12 more minutes? No, I'll do 12 more minutes. This is too important. It is. I mean, I feel like I ought to be getting out of here myself and getting ready. You know, the old saying from Italy uh, that the uh, cobbler's children have no shoes. 
He's too busy making everybody else's shoes. I haven't gotten myself ready properly, Gerald. Well, again, that's why I'm saying, here, if you were lived in Russia and you just saw your currency devalue by 50% and you own gold and gold is based in dollars, you think you're better off owning the gold. The only reason the dollar is strong is because all the other currencies are so weak. Our retail numbers stink. Our job numbers, you know the That's right. Stay there. We're the, we're the best house in a bad neighborhood. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you go back to the 1870s and the 1890s and 1904, uh, there were runs on banks and runs on silver companies and runs on government bonds. And there were panics and there were tulip bubbles in Europe worldwide where tulips were selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars and then those bubbles would fall and there were bubbles where people wanted a certain type of French bulldog and a French bulldog would cost you know a thousand dollars in the 1890s or whatever in Paris equivalent to like a hundred thousand dollars today but those are localized bubbles where if you want to be an idiot and, and pay the equivalent of $5 million for a tulip today, that's your problem. And if you want to be a shark, you can ride the bubble up knowing it's a bubble and then know when to get out. And it'd be one thing if the stock market had just become that. We know it's rigged, it's come out, the interest rates, the currency rates, all of it. The point is the people running things have rigged it to be too big to fail to suck in the whole society, to suck in the whole world so that the entire planet is in danger, the civilization, and then they get us to commit to them, the managers that made the problem happen in the first place. It's premeditated. This is how we're going to get corporate world government. And so that's why it's essential to expose the big five mega banks as the people behind it. And they're the ones behind the open borders. And they're the ones behind coming after your guns. Every time you check, they're the ones behind pushing gender identity crisis on young people. They are the social engineers. They are the nasty people running the whole show. They are the ones getting ready for worldwide upheaval in Pentagon reports and Ministry of Defense reports back in 2007. This is engineered and ready. And they think out of this crisis, this cascade of crises, they're going to get full control. Gerald Salente, we've got about 11 and a half minutes left. You've got the floor. Break it down. Yes, and as you, you were saying how they try to, you know, you call people like you and I gloom and doomers. This is from Saturday's front page of the New York Times in the business section. Remember, the markets have just begun to collapse. This week's market sell-off may not be such a bad thing. If you step back just a bit, what's happened in the financial markets this week looks less like a catastrophe in the making and more like a much-needed breather when various markets had been starting to look a little bubbly. I'm not making this up. Here's how he closes. In the meantime, the best response for most investors trying to grapple with the latest bout of volatility is to take a deep breath. Right behind that, on B2, they call the New York Times the paper of record. How about the toilet paper of record? Here's the next story. Take some deep breaths and don't do a thing. That's the headline. Two headlines. The fire in the North Tower is under control. Go back to your offices. Remember that one? 9-11. And this is an economic 9-11 that's about to hit us. It's collapsing in front of us. It has nothing to do with markets being bubbly. It has to be with a commodity crash, a currency crash, because economies are crashing. You look at milk from, from New Zealand. Their exports are down like 60% because milk prices are plummeting. It's one after another. There's too much product and not enough demand. And we're going to see this continue. And I sit here as a father of three, and I sit here as somebody who goes to eat at Luby's, which is just kind of a blue-collar working class um, 
Texas-based, became a national chain of um, cafeterias. Been going there since I was about two years old. Like to take the kids there. And never in my life have I gone to Luby's, but also other restaurants, and seen people talking about old ladies, you name it, not being able to order the food they want and, and getting little bitty plates and watching old ladies get water instead of iced tea because they can't pay the dollar for the tea. And you can tell people don't have money. All the family I know, a lot of which are upper middle class, don't have anywhere near the money they used to have. Working class family I've got are all, you know, living together and, and barely able to pay to have gas to go to work, even though gas prices have gone down. Um, the economy in most areas is in the toilet, as you know, and they just sit up there on the news saying everything's fine, everything's wonderful. Uh, it's just crazy to see this political class, and instead of handling all of this, there's national news stories going, the names boy and girl to be banned in public schools. Um, you know, Caitlyn Jenner has is a hero and has courage, and it's just... It's fantastical. It's like a Kurt Vonnegut novel that they give us all these weird issues to fight over while the country's being sucked dry and while the world's imploding. And then the, the third world, six plus billion people of the seven and a half billion that want to come to the first world. The first world is in many cases super decadent and corrupt other than the folks that are working. And I just don't know what all these backstabbers and people in the power structure are going to do once things get really bad. They think they're going to ride out the austerity and that it's going to be cute and funny. They think a police state something they can control. I mean, they, they have literally laid the groundwork for their own destruction. The smart billionaires, as we talked about 30 minutes ago, have basically all fled or have jets fueled waiting to get out at any moment. To, to, to literal armored fortresses. Uh, but, but the mid-level Richie Rich types that are worth a million bucks or whatever, you know, sitting in government swindling houses or corporate swindling positions, do they have any idea that people are going to come after them, Gerald? No, they don't have any idea what's going on. Again, this guy Art Cashin saying that nobody expected this. And he's a guy I respect, by the way. He usually says it like it is. It not you look at all the headlines, uh, 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 and you see Alex headline after headline. They're blaming China. China has nothing to do with this. China's just China's. As I said, it's the canary in the equity market mine. That's all it is. It's signaling if China can't make it, the reason they're not exporting things are because people aren't buying things. It's simple. Because there's a global meltdown. It's exactly, you know, 10 years ago, uh, they couldn't get enough ships to ship goods over here. I saw a statistic just a few weeks ago where it said that 60% of Chinese carrier ships are empty. That right there tells you everything you need to know, Gerald. Well, you, look, you keep looking at it. You don't even have to go that far. You just go down to Savannah, and, and, and the shipping is way off. All of the numbers coming out from Europe going into China, from China going into Europe, it's way down. The facts are there. This has nothing to do with an equity bubble popping because of overvaluations. That became, that's a reality. How do we reverse it? Do you expect the establishment to try to reverse it? Or are they just going to continue to QE? No, no, they're going to they're going to more QE. I I agree with um, oh, his name slipped my mind. Dent He's on your show. No, not Dent. The um, Schiff in the nest. Uh, you know exactly where you look. Peter like. Schiff. And, yeah, Peter Schiff. Yeah, Peter Schiff has been saying QE indefinitely. I agree with Peter Schiff completely. I'm going to skip this break and do a few more minutes with you to give you the last word. But I want to play a short clip of Mr. Dent with us um, back on the 13th of August, about a week and a half before this all accelerated, specifically saying he gives it a few weeks. Uh, you basically have been saying the same thing. And then I want to ask you, and I know you don't like to get totally exact because nobody can do that but God, but really putting your head in this, Gerald Salente of TrendsResearch.com, in your gut, how do you see this unraveling? What's the main probability? I think that's a fair question. Let's play this clip. The biggest thing since we last talked 
China's bubble in stocks finally burst. It, it, it means nothing when a stock bubble bursts 10% or 20%. That can just be an no, ordinary correction. 35% in a little over three weeks. And how much would it have been if the government had not come in with a half a trillion dollar fund to buy their own stocks? And this came after the government in China had been buying empty real estate to prop up that market that's been falling. And after they created the greatest bubble in history by moving a half a billion people, um, low skilled people from rural areas to urban areas in the shortest period of time in history, China is the greatest bubble in history. It is finally coming unraveled. That's why I am confident that we are within, I'd say, weeks of, of the global bubble bursting again. China was the first thing actually before that in March, Germany. The leading market in Europe looked like it peaked to me. And then, and then the China crash in late May um, uh, and, and end of July. And now I think the U.S. markets are going to start heading down by early September, probably peaking in the next week or two. So I think this is happening. All right. Now let's go to a brief clip of Jack Lou. This is the Treasury Secretary a few weeks ago saying that don't worry china is not connected to the u.s folks we're more connected to china than any other country hands down no debating it it's probably the biggest economy in the world because our numbers are booked are, are cooked in the books but regardless second biggest economy biggest sovereign owner of our debt the federal reserve is the largest period uh most of our manufactured goods come in our companies that are based here are pretty much manufacturing there I, I mean, we are joined like Siamese conjoined twins here, ladies and gentlemen. And for them to say this is utter horse crap. And people say, oh, this guy must be an idiot. No, he's a con man up there to keep the little guys at the casinos. Listen, let me tell you what I saw. And Gerald talked about this last year. Austin, Texas, one of the nicest cities in the country. One of the prettiest lower taxes. It's a very nice town, except for this time of year where it's 105 degrees. But great town. I go to the nicer areas, nicer restaurants, nicer places or whatever sometimes. And all I see is rich Chinese everywhere. Okay? I mean, they have taken over. Fine. They got jobs. They got money. Whatever. I don't have a problem with those immigrants. The point is, they look freaked out, though. And it's in the news. They're exiting all over the world. They're fleeing to what they think is safer, running. Okay? And while the news in China was saying, stay in the market, stay in the market, stay in the market, it's safe, it's safe. That's what's already happening here. Let's play this clip and then get Gerald Salente's take on it. Uh, here is the Treasury Secretary. But I will say that China's markets are still pretty much separated from world markets. Of course, um, They're obviously moving towards being more integrated, but right now they're not. So you're not going to, I don't think, uh, see the, 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 the direct linkage there. I think the concern that is a real one is what does it mean about long-term growth in China? As if China not growing doesn't affect us. What do you make of that statement, Gerald Salente, and then what Dent said? Well, you know, Dent obviously is right on. And, and what, what China, what Lou also did just a couple of days ago, actually Saturday was reported, he told China that they should constantly, remember this is coming from our government telling somebody else what to do that they should not concentrate on exports as much as they are and that they should they should develop more of a consumer society so that people could also shop until they drop essentially here's what's really important alex i've been around you know quite a while and i've been following trends since 1980 i have never seen a summer like this you don't see big market unravelings happening until late September, October. Because in the old days, people would go away on vacation and things would be quiet. This is the new world order. You're looking at volume levels that are near records in, di in different sections. And this to, be, this to be happening at the heat of the summer, at the quietest, the quietest. A trading low, time. this is an artificial thing that's going on. If this is this if this to be collapsing in in August. You're asking me to put a timetable on things. For it to be collapsing in August, July and August is it's unprecedented in modern history. So what I'm saying to you 
if you see this kind of collapse happening with high volume, it's not thin volume trading, because if it was, then you can say it's being manipulated. I'm saying to you that this thing is unstoppable and that it's going to continue to unravel globally. What will happen in the U.S.? It's hard to say because of the tight controls of the Federal Reserve. I mean, they have their, they have their desk on the trading floor, for God's sakes. You know, they, they're right there. You know, so it's hard to say. And by the way, when they first happen, put in the plunge protection... control. Sure. Well, when they first put the plunge protection team in, as you know, after the 87 crash, it was pretty much secret. It was kind of a rumor for the general public that it was actually propping things up. Now they admit it. Why don't you explain to new viewers or listeners uh, how they're propping up our stock market? China did this, as you know, a few weeks ago, Gerald. It didn't end up working. Do you think it will work here? Yes, it'll work here more efficiently because the tight, it's tighter control, and these guys are more savvy at doing it. Having said that, they only could prop it up to a point. And remember, when you go back to the 87 crash, you know, following it, they propped it right back up. And the crash should have went a lot worse. So the crash may happen. They'll prop it up. It'll be a phony prop. The Chinese do not have the skills that the Americans have in playing this game. They're rookies at it. You can see what they did when the Shanghai index was collapsing. They Again, they prevented short selling. They prevented people from say, selling grade A shares for six months. They dumped in two hundred trillion plus into the markets, and they also pulled off almost fifty percent of the tradable shares. What they'll do in the states, I believe, to calm it is after the plunge protect protection team does its, jo its job, they'll call a holiday. They'll quiet things out. Holiday. That's right. Let's have a Wall Street. They did it after they did it after 9-11. People forgot it. Wall Street was closed for a week. Well, you they see the head of Citibank and, and all these groups saying let's ban cash so they can really control us and just steal the money right out of the accounts. And when they and by the way, when they open it up after the holiday, they'll do exactly like they did when Roosevelt did it. They'll devalue the currency because back then the dollar was pegged to gold. It was selling for what? About $22 and 60 cents an ounce. When they forced the people to turn in all their gold bullion coins, well, way up. certificate, they reschedule it. They repegged it to $35 an ounce. They just robbed that amount of money sure. from the people. And that's what they'll do this time. Well, I don't want to say I disagree with Dent. You and he and Schiff are all pretty close on a lot of fronts because it's just common sense. But it's still three guys look at the same problem from different perspectives. They're going to have different answers. And I think between all your answers and my own research is where you find, you know, the truth. But but time will tell on that. But he's right. They've got a depression worldwide, but they're also accelerating the currencies, which devalues. So it, it kind of averages out and only helps the elite because they get first use of the money. But he thinks gold will go down for the next 10 years and finally explode uh, after that because other commodities will go down. But I see the elites themselves quietly hoarding it and institutions hoarding it. And that makes me think they know something we don't know. And I know they've talked about this new SDR they're already using at the IMF World Bank level, a new level of bubbles, Gerald, of fiat currency that is backed by a spectrum of currencies uh, 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 and and other commodities mixed in with gold and silver that are commodities, obviously, at least 30%. They've proposed that before. And he says, oh, no, they'll never do it. It's not a good commodity to use. It should just be, you know, fiat or whatever. The point is they're proposing that. Then they could play and manipulate all those little markets that are within the basket, which is what these insiders love. And so that's where I see all this going. What comes in closing from Trends Journal in your view, what comes out of this if these guys win? What type of world will it be? Well, again, that may happen, what you said, but remember when Bretton Woods happened. It happened after the war. Yes. So that might happen after the war. And I, I respectfully disagree with Dent because you kept talking and he, and he was saying about the currency devaluations. If your currency is being devalued, wouldn't you rather own gold than a devalued currency? And when you're looking at the declining prices of gold compared to or copper, nickel, aluminum, it's not even close. Absolutely. Well, listen, 
even if it's going to go down in value, it's better than cash that can be completely devalued. So, so you hold it as a hedge regardless, but absolutely, this, this stuff's all got to go down sometime. And so when they revalue it or whatever, just in my gut historically, too, it tells me gold, silver, and other things are going to be more valuable. Exactly, and I believe when gold prices go up, they're going to spike up. You're going to... Uh, now his cell phone has gone out, uh, this third world nation. Uh, Kingston's got the power off. Austin has its power go off all the time now, too. They've shut down most of our power plants. Then gouges. The only other power plants owned by GE and insiders, so, you know. I guess Ceausescu just only let the Romanians have their... Uh, power one hour a day but he he got power all the time he had his own little city and he did that on purpose he said it's to control them let them know i'm the boss i will decide when they get power sometimes on a holiday give them maybe half a day of power Hello. Or, uh yes you're back your cell phone cut out you got one minute gerald trendsresearch.com thank you so much what's the closing comment all right again let's stay on with this with the gold we said that the bottom of gold was about a, a thousand to 1150 we can't see it going down much lower than that because it doesn't pay to pull it out of the ground after a thousand. And again, what we're saying is, if your currency is being devalued, why not own gold? So we believe where our forecast is that when gold prices go up, they're going to spike up and they're going to break well over the two thousand mark. Well, Dent thinks when it finally does go back up ten thousand. I mean, regardless, down the road, I don't see how it couldn't go up. We're talking within a, with, within a shorter period. We think we're near the bottom of gold. And we think from this point forward, you know, it can go down another 100, 150, but if the upside potential is going to happen, and when it happens, we're saying it's going to happen in spikes. All right. And it's going to leave a lot of people shut out. Well, thank you. Gold You'll be here with us. Since the beginning of time, it's not going anywhere. All right. Thank you, Gerald Salente. Great job. Not only this tonight, 7 o'clock.